My name is Roy Olson, and I'm your friend. I'm speaking to you today from the backyard, the gradina of Apavia in Peștere, Caras Severin in Romania, where I serve as a missionary. I want to talk to you today about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, and my experience with that. Having been raised in a very godly home with uh, mom and dad, both uh, very spirit-filled people and uh, unashamedly so, and uh, I uh, was uh, received Christ, I received the witness of the Spirit that I was a child of God through the confirming of the Word of God, particularly uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 24. After that, uh, knowing that I knew in a uh, awareness, a, a knowledge that surpassed any training that I had received in school, it was just a higher level of knowledge and certainty, I was ecstatic with overwhelming joy, effervescent joy. Uh, I call it like sarsaparilla, uh, carbonated soda, just joy just bubbling up within me to the point that it wasn't expressed in laughter nor even the physiology of my facial expressions. But nevertheless, it was incredible, deep, uh, pervasive joy. And uh, I began to devote time to prayer and to the study of my Bible. Actually, I devoted uh, two hours a day, one hour to prayer, and one hour to Bible study. It was just the reverse, the Bible study and then the prayer, because my prayer would all often be about the study that I had done in the Bible. And I timed it. And uh, I wouldn't stop the study or the prayer until one hour to the second at times was completed. I became very hungry for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand fully what it was, but I understood enough that it was a it was another um, revelation. It was another uh, time and encounter in a different way with uh, God uh, being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and. Uh, so I began a, a quest, a, a, a desire, a yearning to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And of course, uh, I was uh, taught that although uh, speaking in tongues uh, may be and, and uh, um, oftentimes is a um, physical manifestation of the uh, baptism, the infilling uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, I rather uh, was taught to seek the person of Jesus Christ and a relationship with him and allow him to bring into my life whatever gifts or manifestations that uh, he would choose. And so I, uh, I did that. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, in church and especially in my experience in Pilgrim Camp in the Adirondack Mountains of uh, the state of New York, I, I, I saw people um, so overwhelmed with an infilling, an experience of the Holy Spirit manifested in effervescent joy and, and shouts and exclamations of pure liquid uh, golden honey joy that uh, I became more and more desirous and uh, jealous. And I saw that happen very frequently and oftentimes I felt like a, a dry, uh, shriveled up 
a log uh, laying in the forest someplace. I, uh, I didn't experience anything like that. However, as a counselor at uh, this uh, camp in the Adirondack Mountains, one night we had a prayer meeting with the boys. They were around uh, 16, 17 years of age, as I recall. We were in the blackness of a large army tent having a prayer meeting and somehow God showed up. And the boys knew it. And their prayer, their, it was uh, beyond their natural ability. And also, I sensed the presence of God there in a powerful, extraordinary way. And uh, it, it was unforgettable. It's just etched within uh, my memory, uh, never to be erased. And uh, that night, that prayer meeting lasted for a few hours and we were reluctant to, to leave uh, of, of such a magnitude was the, the joy and the pleasure uh, and the ecstatic encounter with uh, God the Holy Spirit. I had not yet spoken in tongues. And I do remember in a public meeting a, a clergyman with whom I have the, had the highest respect. He's now gone to be with the Lord, uh, Gordon Gardner. But he mentioned that, uh, let us pray for, amongst others, Roy, because he has not yet received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I, uh, inside I said, Brother Gordon, if you count the baptism of the Holy Spirit as speaking in tongues, yes, I had not yet done so. But if you count the baptism of the Holy Spirit with an encounter with the uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, with an overwhelming uh, uh, presence and uh, infilling of his, his love, his glory, his majesty, uh, his greatness, well, then I would beg to differ with you, sir. But, of course, I kept that all internal. And I want to just re remind you I have the greatest and highest respect for that man. He's one of my mentors of my early Christian life. Well, I was attending Hunter College of the city of New York at the time. Uh, I was uh, majoring in physics and mathematics. And I remember sitting in the class in, uh, I believe it was my chemistry class, and the professor, we called him Mumbles Mayforth. Professor Mayforth uh, mumbled when he talked, when he taught. And so that was his nickname. I remember sitting there in that class and looking to my right out the window at the campus and seeing the trees and the, the seeing um, the beauty of nature. My heart was just overwhelmed with the majesty of God. And uh, I couldn't wait. It was a Friday. I couldn't wait to get to church at the Ridgewood Pentecostal Church that night for, for no other reason than just to worship God. And they had incredible times of worship and praise, not forced or hyped, but uh, very spontaneous. And um, a precious woman by the name of Wally uh, would support not hype, not force, but support the worship on that beautiful, majestic organ. And uh, anyway, I got to church that night, and lo and behold, it was packed. It was packed. There was hardly a seat in the place, and I guess I had gotten there a little late, and uh, the service was already in progress. But there was one place where the usher uh, directed me to, and it was right next to... Sister Lucy Petraca. Lucy was a magnificent woman. Lucy was uh, something else. Italian, outgoing, effervescent, ever exuberant, and of course, when she worshiped audibly, she was loud. As a matter of fact, she was probably 
the loudest of the loud in the church. Not obnoxiously so, beautifully so. <laughs> I, got, I got plucked right next to her. And so I, being somewhat bashful in those days, not wanting anybody to hear my voice, was well covered by her spectacular voice. And I began to join in, in worship, not just praise, worship, turning my eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and attribute to him the glory, the majesty, the beauty, the love, the grace, the forgiveness, all those wonderful attributes of deity I, I verbalized back to him in worship. And as I was worshiping, I somehow saw, my eyes were closed, but I somehow saw something in the vast distance of the cosmos, like something like the fluttering of a handkerchief, uh, just fluttering down in... Uh, by way of gravity, you're fluttering and down, and it was headed in my direction. And uh, if you know what a parabolic arch is, it's something that is like this and goes up like this, a parabolic arch. And uh, it was coming down, and when it reached the bottom of the arc, that was my head, or me. And as soon as that happened, without trying, without any effort, without even thinking about it, I was worshiping God in another language. And I realized that I was speaking in tongues. And then that the uh, fluttering continued on upward, probably to return from whence it came. May I correct that and say whence he came? And uh, I, I then began to speak in tongues. Now, I had heard about holy rollers and uh, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, you roll around, you jump over pews, you, uh, you do things like that. And so I was, I was game. Hey, I'll roll, I'll jump, whatever. Nothing, nothing. The only thing that I'm aware of that happened that night was that I was given the gift of speaking in tongues. When did that happen? Well, on November 22, 1963, John F. Kennedy was shot. What an awful tragedy. How America did pray on that awful, awful day. Still today, no prayer or Bible reading in the school. No more, no prayer or Bible reading. I wonder who we can fool. Anyway, that was November 22. One week before that, November 15, 1963, was that glorious event. And uh, now we're many years beyond that in uh, September of 2014. But I have to confess, still speaking in tongues. Not the same way in which I did then, but it's just a, a natural outflow of prayer and worship. And so that's my experience. And I, I highly recommend it. it. It'll be something that's etched in your life for life and eternity. My name is Roy. Thanks for listening. God bless you.